Kelly Horan and I'm sitting here with Frankie Pelin from The Darkness. How are you doing, Frankie? Good. I'm good. Ready Last for gig of the tour. Oh, sick. Um, yeah. Tired, but uh, also possibly even slightly emotional. If it's possible for uh, a Scotsman, it's probably my French side is emotional. The Scottish <laughs> side, uh, middle-aged Scottish men don't really get too emotional. It's all seized up by then. I was just about to ask that because um, I read that you have some famous pirateer blood, Scottish, French. Yeah, really. You must be yeah, right. My dad actually uh, was a pirate. He started off as a classical violinist. He won a scholarship to the Guildhall of Music in the early 60s. He came from Hartlepool, See? from a coal mining family. And then he uh, became a violinist in the BBC Concert Orchestra and then formed the Edinburgh Quartet. Wow. And then he became um, a drug runner. A drug runner. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, that means I won't be able to get a visa next time we come back. <laughs> well, it's been a while since you've been here, so how does it feel to be back? Um, it's great, yeah. It's just a crazy place, Australia. I mean, uh, the, they're also, t you know, you're in Perth and then Brisbane and uh, Melbourne and completely different from each other. Perth reminds me of Scotland in the 1970s. It's like feral, you know. It's electricity in there on a Friday, Saturday night. It's, it's, I really like it. Really, um, exciting place. It gets to be pretty challenged to live there, I suppose. Your latest album, The Last of Our Kind, has been described as pretty epic, um, very classic darkness, but some would say a bit of a mature sound. Uh, do you want to talk about that bit? A bit? Well, Justin did his best to kind of try to vandalise the intended maturity of it by um, coming up with things like Mudslide, which is just completely um, daft, bonkers. But the thing is, okay, what happened is we had to rinse out, it was a rinsing out process for this album because we had to uh, get rid of two managers, two record labels and one drummer, sadly. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, upheaval and it was uh, quite an emotional time. And we could have folded under the pressure, but instead there's a sense of defiance in the music. Mm. So the songs have an extra um, kind of push. And also we set challenges for each other because uh, everything was changing so much. So uh, Dan produced the album, that was his challenge. Justin um, sang in character on Open Fire, changed his voice. And I uh, had to sing lead vocals in a song as well. So. Yeah, well, we got a little a snippet of that before. It was pretty cool. It was Sorry awesome. to subject you to that, but it's, <laughs> it's a work in progress at the no, moment. I thought it was awesome. I think it was really, well, really thank cool. You, yeah, well, do you reckon your uh, songwriting has evolved much or changed? In well, it's much more open now. Um, I feel like I've got more of a voice now, more of an influence. Um, in the past, it's tough with the two brothers uh, composing stuff between them. Mm. It's, uh, but I think we're catalysts for each other, really. We spark each other off. We know how to do it now. We're more aware of each other's strengths and weaknesses. That's cool. There's n n really not much ego involved at all. That's a rarity. Which is great, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's, a huge it's, rarity. it's rare, yeah. We have a great chemistry with each other. That's awesome. Um, just want to talk a little bit about kind of your um, absurd but in a positive way. It's like great. It's nice that you uh, bring that up because a lot of people don't really use that word. Um, but I think that's quite key. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, I'm I, uh, just listening to your songs and watching a few of the clips, like your use of the Great Dane and Barbarian, and you know, I just it's amazing how it goes hand in hand with like intellect and creativity. Mm. Um, is that just how it's always been? Are you guys working on that or? Just what we've always been like. I mean, I think Justin's always been like that. And that's one thing I have in common with him, I think, is uh, I like um, kind of abstract, uh, kind of surreal things. Um, Justin's kind of anti-academic. He's, he's extremely smart and extremely quick-witted and very intuitive as well. He has, uh, I guess, um, like a sixth, sixth sense, you know. Um, and that's why he's able to relate to the crowd so well. But he does have this, have this sense of the absurd. Sometimes we veer into kind of dadism, but he would hate it to be described like that because he's anti-academic, mm. and that's what I admire about him because um, he takes the stand against that because he knows it's it's not it's just not rock and roll. If you bring academia into rock music, you become like um, Eric Clapton. It's just like a kind of teacher yeah. taking away all the um, sex, just extracting all the sex and mystery out of the music and sensuality and playing everything really precisely. Um, I don't, I'm not really a fan of that, you know. Whereas a few weeks ago we were with Buddy Guy and uh, he was just uh, full of electricity and energy and he was, we went to his place Legends in uh, Chicago mm. um, and uh, 
to the 10 minute set and in, in the 10 minutes he expressed um, you know real tenderness um, vulnerability and then just uh, came in like a sledgehammer really tough and um, uh, wild and uh, really primal and masculine you know if you contrast that with uh, I'm just using Clapton as an example of all that to me is wrong with uh, white rock music. You know. Bearing in mind that it's influenced <laughs> by, uh, you know, the blues from the, you know, black blues music. You know. yeah. Oh, I think yeah, you said it all there. So thank you so much, Frankie. It was lovely to meet you, and Good really looking forward to the show tonight. So thank you. Thank you.